Hi, I'm Lars Stang. I'm doing service innovation or service design. Um, does everybody of you know what service design is? Just really quick introduction. Um, service design is about yeah, designing great services. So let's talk about the, the difference between product and the service. So we all know products need to be really well designed so that people can use them. Um, but we need to think about what is different with the service and how do we have to design services. So first of all, a product is a tangible thing and a service is something intangible. It's just something that, that happens. It's not something that is. Um, a product, can, you can store it and a service is delivered in a moment so you experience it while it happens. It's not produced at one moment, uh, at one point and then used later. It's something that is being performed actually. So service design really is it's about making those experiences uh, really useful and um, it is important to design services in the same way how you design a product really well. So um, it's about creating a great user experience, making something coherent, and most of all, it's about designing something across different platforms or in different touch points. So service can be ma manifested in a, in, a, in a product, in a physical product, in an interface, in a people-to-people -people interaction and creating a really good user experience around all these things. This is what service design is really about. Service design is by nature multidisciplinary, so we always have to think of, com of components like, you know, what do people need, what do they want, what is the technology that can deliver this, and uh, of course we have to consider then the business model uh, in that context. So yes, someone can say, I'm a service designer, but there's never ever one person who can deal with all these things. So it's always a team effort, it's always a group thing. So today I want to talk about three challenges around uh, service design in the realm of Internet of Things. I find Internet of Things ex extremely exciting because it's first an area that is not really resolved yet, so there's a lot of interesting things coming out in the next four years. Hard to predict, it's a really immature market. But the other thing that excites me about it is it's this blend between something physical and something intangible that makes it really yeah, extra exciting. So the first thing is services are, are things, things can be services, um, the lines are getting blurrier. So basically what happens when you connect a product to the internet, it basically changes everything. So from this point on you cannot just think about a product as a product as you used before, so if you as a company have a product and then you connect it to the internet, from that moment on you have to treat it as a service. So you have to then not only think about your value chain as a company, how you produce something, how you deliver it, how you get it to the market, but you also have to then think about how it is used, how do you update it over time, how do you expand its capabilities, how do you deliver it. Um, yeah, you will have more touch points. There will be an interface on the mobile, there will be this physical thing, there will be customer service. So it's changing a lot for those companies that are uh, doing products. But just, just a quick example of, of what that means. You know, we all know what a car is. We typically own a car. This is the example of, um, of Zipcar, which is a car sharing service. So it has a, has a little computer on board that is connected to the internet. And what it allows is um, to change the business model of, of how we use cars completely. So it, turn, it starts with a car and then ends up with a mobility service that, um, um, where, where the ownership is actually a part that is taken away. So every, there's, there's a lot of components that are now happening around the car. So we have an app, we, we actually open the car with, with, with the app, we have, um, we have new infrastructure, so they, they have dedicated parking spaces. Um, there's new ways of instructions and new ways of social behavior, so you have to reserve a car. Um, and most of all, I think the business model changes completely, and that's what's really most exciting about um, you know, turning a product into a service. Um, it creates a lot of challenges, especially for companies that come from product and then move into services. So as I said before, they have to now deal with a lot of um, different things than they had to before. And uh, probably many of you have heard that story a few weeks ago that some, some spam bot company turned a few of those connected fridges into spam bots and, and, and sent um, unwanted mail around. So there's not 
really many, many hardware companies, or think of an appliance company, now they have to deal with those things that normally a software company has to do, which is updates, privacy, security. So adding all these new components is, is a bit challenging there for many companies. There's also another way around to think about uh, connected services, which is uh, build, improving your services using connected products. So this is an example of an insurance company that places a little tracker in your car, and, and based on the way you drive, you know, you, you change your, uh, you know, that affects the, the rate, that affects how much you pay. And also here, it's really interesting what, what questions may arise um, suddenly when you, when you connect and make a car more intelligent. So, oh, if I have an accident, will they use that information against me or in a particular way? Um, how, how private is this? So, so people are you know, maybe willing to put something in their car so that they get, get a cheaper rate, but in the end, there may be these, these doubts about you know, privacy and, and what does it really do to me. So these are all things that we have to consider. Um, and we all know that um, you know, Google bought Nest. And um, I, I think, in the, first, first of all, it was obviously you know, Google wants to get into people's homes and, and, and using a lot of that data. But I think m most of all, it's not many software companies, or there's, there's very few companies out there that do re software and services in the same way as, uh, as they do products. I think Apple is one of the few companies that really does that well. And I think one of the main reasons actually why Google bought, uh, bought Nest is to get that capability to create great products, you know, great connected products, to get that in-house. So basically getting a bunch of ex-Apple engineers in there to help them doing this. Because as a big software companies, you know, then dealing with um, produ production um, so somewhere else is, is a big challenge as well. Another area I find really interesting is, is apps going physical. So like you see here, Berg's, Berg's uh, little printer. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's basically printing out um, messages. So it makes things that we used to have in, in, in a virtual world, it makes it physical. Uh, this is another project we call uh, Radio Me. That's something a friends of mine at Telefonica RD just recently built. So this is basically a little, a little physical device that lets, uh, especially the elderly, use WhatsApp. Because there's many people that don't use smartphones, that are afraid of, these te of, of the technology in itself, and they're disconnected from what you know, the rest of the family or, or some of their friends are using. So, so we created like, this, this really physical device that says, oh, this is actually not technology. Um, it, it is really simple. But with that, you can stay connected with those people that are, you know, that are always in the in the social media, while you're typically not, as an elderly person. So taking that, what is a, what's typically in the app world, and make that physical, I think, is another really exciting area for connected products. Right. The second point, just really quickly, is when things become social, everything is a bit more complicated, a little bit more complex. It adds a level of complexity to it that makes it difficult to really design good, good experiences for it. Um, so, we, we now, as, as, uh, as service designers, we really start to go, go really deep to get inspired by, by personal stories. To, uh, we're, we're having more of an anthropologist's mindset. But now with, um, with um, social behaviors and, and complex group behaviors, there's a lot of things we can't observe directly. So now we actually have to work together with data scientists. Um, to, to really make sense of, of, the, of all those behaviors and in order to create... So, so, so like it's, it's like these new collaborations um, to, to really deal with that complexity. So now bring in things into the social interactions, and I think that opens up a, new, a whole new other slew of questions that we have to deal with. So what does it mean that a thing becomes social? Does it have a personality? Um, who is responsible for the, for the actions of a, of a social thing. Um, of service design, in, in this case, we have to really deal with what are like the new, so, new conventions and, and the social behaviors um, when we bring sing, things into the social world. I think, for example, with, with Google Glass, which is a connected object, um, I think there's already a lot of talk about like, what is okay and what is not okay to use in the public space. So if I walk into, you know, 
into a room and I want to let people know maybe I just have to make that gesture and putting it up so everybody knows, okay, I, um, I'm not recording you. So, so there's a lot of interesting um, um, yeah, social behavior that is going to evolve and, and, and there, there's interesting things happening in that arena when things move into the social space. So service design here is really social design in a certain way. And that's another point I want to talk about is democratizing the Internet of Things. So in general, we, we see there was like a huge wave of democratization of tools. More people have access to, um, to really easy to use tools to, to publish their content, to, to print things at home, to do manufacturing, the whole maker movement. I think that there's really exciting things happening out there. Um, and, and I think it's really important that, that, um, that not only the usual suspects are engaging in, in making things happening. So let's look at um, the smart cities. So a lot of the smart cities, um, many of the projects or many of the approaches are very infrastructure focused. So now we, we roll out like this big sensor network and uh, to, to, make, to create like a smart city grid. But at the same time, I think it's really important that there that this top-down approach is being complemented by a bottom-up um, citizen innovation. And not just on an, on an activist's level, on a, um, on a, on a counter, counterbalancing level, but really to make innovation happen. So if there's only you know, a few, few um, big players in there, this is not the critical mass that we need to really generate innovation in the, in the Internet of Things or in the smart city space. So you really have to enable um, everyone to participate to make things happening. But the issue right now is that in the Internet of Things space, um, that, that democratization is still not quite happening. Um, why is that? It's mainly for, for two reasons. So there is actually no real Internet of Things. There's just various intranets of things. They don't talk to one another. And um, every one of those silos always saying, oh, if every, everybody just used our system, yes, then we would have the Internet of Things, but that's not how things work. So there's a big ecosystem challenge that, uh, that needs to be dealt with. And that's on one hand. On the other hand, it's Internet of Things is complex. So if, you, if you're in, in apps, you, know, you need basically you know, good design and good app developer and you can go. If you do deal with Internet of Things, you have to think about electronics, about hardware, um, production design. You have to um, think about you know, the UI front end. You have to have the data back end. You have to deal with the connectivity, how things talk to one another, and, and all those elements. So that creates quite a barrier for many people to, to participate and yeah, to start innovating in that space. So today, the Internet of Things um, arena is, is really reserved to like, let's say some, I'm, I'm simplifying, no? to, to like some really big players that can afford to create like a multidisciplinary team and then have the financial muscle to, to build things. So that's on the very left end of that long tail graphic. And then there's on the very right end, then they have those that I call, you know, the, the, the smart makers, the Arduino people um, and, and the like that, that have that, that, that multidisciplinary skill, but it's, typically staying very, very, very you know, small scale. So what I think what we really need to do is to enable all the rest of, the, of that long tail to also participate in the Internet of Things. So that's actually a project I'm working on right now. Um, we call it Thinking Things. So the idea is, can we offer something to those who want to create a service, but they only know really one thing really well, and can't we just take care of all the other things that they need to know? So if there's like a software developer and wants to create a great software service, we can already give him some hardware. So this idea here is like it's, it's a modular thing. You can combine the, um, the, um, the components that you need. That's all plug and play. You have a front end, you have a back end. So it's, we just want to make it really easy for, for people who want to create solutions but don't have that, that muscle or have all, this, all the capabilities to build something to make it easier for them to create new solutions. So, uh, because I think it's, it's only if people with, with, with specific needs, if they can also play along and, and if they can participate in, in the Internet of Things space, this is when we, re we see a really big jump in, uh, in innovation happening in the Internet of Things space. So, um, Harald, yesterday, he put up this quote 
by, by, by Steve Jobs. And I think this is, this is very true to, or this, this is a good example of, of what I think this, the, the role of service design is in general. So it's about like a more human and a more holistic view, view on innovation and, and technology. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much.